Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Ye, and my topic is basically talking about anything about the heart problem. Particular, a lot of people die from the heart disease. The heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. And let's look at some a picture we showed on the following. For the past one year, we've been very, very busy about the coronavirus. So we almost forget what is coronary disease, which there is a big difference between the coronary disease and coronavirus. If you temporarily forget the virus, which up to year before 2020, the number one cause of death is from heart disease. So one of the four people who die because of heart problem. Of course, after a endemic pandemic, so suddenly in the United States and all the world, people die mostly are from coronavirus. So do not mix up with the two entity. So why they call coronary disease and coronavirus? So this is the crown of the king or the queen. So the shape of the crown is related with the shape of the coronary disease and also coronavirus. So we are talking about a coronary disease, which is the model of the heart. So we are focused on the very tiny artery on the surface of the heart, which you can see, forget the top one, there's three big vessels. One is the red one, which is artery, and the black one, or the green one, the dark blue one, which is talk about the vein. So look at the bottom, the lower half of the heart. There is a small artery in the red one, which we call coronary arteries of the heart. Just like the coronary or the crown on top of the king or the queen. Now this is the electronic microscope picture of the coronavirus. Seems to be the crown or exactly the shape, so that's why it labeled as a coronavirus. That's 19, which you designate, we discovered back in 2019. Okay, introduction. Up to last year, or the year before, before the pandemic, the number one cause of death in the United States and in other advanced countries as well, there's the number one cause of the death. And in the United States, the number two cause of death is cancer. And we came from Taiwan. And in Taiwan, the number one cause of death is cancer. But in the United States, its number one cause of death is heart problem. So it affects 15.5 million in the United States related with a heart condition. Not necessarily die from it, but more or less they have heart problem. So it turned out to be one heart attack not one death, but one heart attack in 41 seconds. So before the pandemic, this is the number one, I repeat it again, number one cause of death in the United States. So let's focus on why we have so many heart problems. Basically, if you die from, if anybody die from heart problem, we are talking about the cor coronary disease, which is the major portion of the heart problem. The heart problem has a lot of problems too, such as congestive heart failure, or electric abnormality, or valvular heart disease, or infectious pericarditis. A lot, a lot of the heart disease in addition to the coronary disease, but we are mostly focused on coronary disease. The majority of patients die from heart condition uh, belong to coronary disease. The basic mechanism 
which causing coronary disease, it, there is very, very tiny artery. If you look at a small panel on the picture, which the surface have a small artery, about three to four millimeter in diameter. It tend to be plugged up by a lot of factor. So once the coronary artery become narrowing by the plaque, which by the deposit of the cholesterol and some lipid stuff, with less blood go through the artery, less blood supply to the muscle of the heart. So which we call as atherosclerosis. Sclerosis means hardening of the artery. So what, to the point that if complete shut off the blood supply to that portion of the artery, and then beyond that, the heart muscle will stop the blood supply, will be dead. So at that time, we call infarction. The common name is heart attack. So number four will be called heart attack. Now, people may not die from heart attack right away, but because of the acute excitement, electricity instability, which causing irregularity of the heart rhythm. So we call arrhythmia. Arrhythmia means it broke out the regular rhythm of the heart. So it, it is electric problem. And the number six, once you have significant damage to the heart muscle, so the heart cannot pump enough for the body to use the energy. So the heart becomes failure. Failure means the supply cannot meet the demand of the body. So we call heart failure. If the heart failure exceeds 30% of the heart function, so the life cannot sustain. So we'll be enough to be dead. So basically the underlying cause is accumulation of the lipid or fatty substance, we call plaque in the lumen of the coronary artery disease. So this is another diagram, another cartoon, another picture showing the sequence of the coronary artery's underlying problem. So the, the, on the top panel, there's early plaque formation, very, very early. It may start at the age of 20, 30, and then significantly plaque formation, it advanced to the the second panel, and the lumen become narrowing further. So until the third one, it came out here from B, C, and D, which is almost complete close up the blood supply to that artery. So once you go to that part, and one day suddenly, due to some other reason we don't understand, it the plaque will rupture, it break out. So once it break out, the platelet that some other substance in the blood go through, it will deposit. They thought, oh, that's a bleeding, we better pack, pack it up to stop it. Once it cuts it stop, so complete shut up that circulation. So we call heart attack. So the heart attack may be completely to a certain hour, completed that muscle. The heart muscle already been damaged severely, cannot recover. So we form in the Q wave, we call the Q wave. From electrocardiogram, we call EKG, it showed as a Q wave there, or acid segment elevation. However, at time, at time. So it may not completely shut out. It opened it again. The body may have some mechanism try to open the blood, supply, the blood circulation. So once it resolved and resolution of the complete occlusion of the thrombi or the blood clot, so that means the patient becomes stable again. So may not be all the heart attack uh, end up to be complete shut off. And they may be spontaneously resolved by itself intermittently. So people may go, get worse for a while and then get better. If they don't go see the doctor, it will for sure will come back again we have another heart attack. 
So this is another picture. It shows that different process, different state of the same mechanism. So we are different term. And years ago, the cardiologist community decided to use this term we call acute coronary syndrome, ACS. That means once you go to this day, that means very critical. You need to go to see doctor or go to emergency room. Okay. We divide into the three category. Number one is unstable angina. That means angina means pain. That means very unstable, very not stable, the pain that on and off and pretty severe. So this is not heart attack yet. This is the warning sign you're going to have the heart attack very soon if you appear this chest pain. This chest pain is prolonged and severe and intermittent and also on and off. And you may go to a sweating or maybe hypotensive. So that we call unstable, but not yet enough to be heart attack. Now the second and the third one, that means heart attack. You do have some heart damage. So we call STEMI, simple as if you look at an EKG, electrocardiogram, there's some STT changes. The cardiologist or the, the internal medicine or emergency doctor, they look at it, they can tell this is a heart attack, this acute heart attack. They have a very specific sign and symptom and the EKG show very characteristic SC elevation. Later on, I will show at the other picture. So we call STEMI. And the number three is we call non-STEMI, but the baseline are the same. Just EKG finding are a little bit different. So the number two and number three are heart attack. The number one is going to have heart attack very soon, but not yet. They all pose a very important and dangerous state before a serious consequence arrives. So how do we prevent it? How do we know this? Can we do anything about it? Of course we do. Remember, we can control it. May not be complete release. So we have to look for the risk factor the risk factor means we try to look for some clue. Whoever has these things, they may have underlying problem leading to a heart attack, leading to a heart disease. So we divide into two portions. The first portion is modifiable risk factor. That means we can do something about it. We can try to modify it. Even we try to completely reverse it. So this is very important. And later on, we need to focus on how to modify the risk factor. And number two is non-modifiable risk factor, which we born with it. We inherit it from our parents with it. Or we inherit from a lot of factors which we will not notice about it. So let's focus on the modifiable risk factor which we can do something about it. We can help ourselves. This is simple, common sense. Everybody should know about it. Number one is high cholesterol. Nowadays, in our advanced technique, advanced medical care in the advanced Western country, I think everybody should have the blood test at least once a year. Okay, during the blood test, please discuss with your doctor about the cholesterol. If I have a blood test, the one thing I want to ask, couple things. One, do we have diabetes? Is the sugar high? How high was that? And number two, I ask you, how's my cholesterol? Everybody nowadays should know their own cholesterol number. The same as you should know how old are you. You should know your day of birth. 
this is just common. So please, from now on, I advise, when you have the blood test, when you talk to your own doctor, you ask, do I have my cholesterol check? Okay. Normally, besides you ask the cholesterol number, you remember it. So also find out what is the number represented. So the common number is the total cholesterol is 200, less than 200. Also, the cholesterol have a lot of different division. We have, you heard about that, the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol and some other things. However, the total cholesterol number we want to be less than 200. After the good cholesterol and the best cholesterol, we have the division we should also know about it. And besides you know the total cholesterol number, you also ask the second one, how is my bad cholesterol level? Okay, the best cholesterol should be less than one half the total cholesterol number. So we believe that we should have the bad cholesterol less than 100 if you don't have any heart disease in the past. If you have heart disease, if you have a heart attack, you have some artery corroded, you have stroke before, you need to have the bad cholesterol less than 70, 70, okay? So total cholesterol is less than 200. The best cholesterol level should be less than 100. And if you have more problem or even diabetes, we need to have much less co bad cholesterol level. So after that, you may consider, well, how about my good cholesterol? Okay, we call HDL. Now the good cholesterol is the more the better if you have it. I congratulate you if you have, oh, my good cholesterol is very high, 80, 90, 100. I have one patient, his good cholesterol exceeds 110. So I congratulate him. You said probably in your life you won't have coronary disease if you have the good cholesterol that high. And unfortunately, most people, they have even normal or good cholesterol, they have low good cholesterol. And it's difficult to raise the good cholesterol by other means. However, we do have very strong medicine, medication to bring the bad cholesterol down. Even more than 50% of the total bad cholesterol, we can achieve that easily. And it has been shown that if you bring the bad cholesterol level down, it does help your heart condition. It helps your age, it helps you live longer. You do, it does help you have less chance to have a heart problem. The number two is the tobacco use. Regardless of any type of the tobacco, cigarette, or cigar, or weapon, all the tobacco, they do have bad nicotine things, things contained, which is bad to your heart, bad to your health. And number three, the risk factor is high blood pressure. Now, again, we go back to the same question. If you go see the doctor routinely, either the doctor or the nurses, check your blood pressure number before you go see the doctor. So please ask them, remember that. What is my blood pressure today? If you do have a machine to check your own blood pressure at home and record it, I congratulate you. It should be the healthy way, healthy, healthy lifestyle to keep that number. If you check your blood pressure every day, put down in a small book, remind you, I think it helps you a lot. So, and modern person, we should know a lot of things about your good data. 
Nowadays, people use the advanced the smartphone. They even can record your heart rate, your oxygen. Sometimes the newer watch, they can even record it, your blood sugar. Okay, so those things we should remember. So remember your blood pressure number. And uh, the number four is diabetes. For the past 20, 30 years, it's become pandemic, the whole world. More people has diabetes compared to 10, 20 years ago. We don't know why. It could be due to in the advanced society, we eat a lot of food, which is processing. Not pure, not raw material. They're all processing food. So those are re partially responsible with causing pandemic of the diabetes. The diabetes number will reaching very, very high level, not even in the advanced country, even in the poor third country, they all become pandemic. When I practiced about 30, 40 years ago, we don't see new onset of diabetes often in the outpatient. For, but for the past 10 years, 20 years, we often see more new diagnosis of diabetes. So suddenly, people come and have blood tests every year, once a year, and wow, your blood pressure, this, your blood sugar this time was high. So, so it is a, a very serious thing. Once you have diabetes, the chance you have the heart disease is double and triple. Okay, there's a word. If you are diabetes, that means you also have heart disease, unless you prove otherwise. Okay, so equal, almost equal, Diabetes equal heart disease is a very serious thing. So low estrogen in the woman, that is why the lady did not tend to have coronary heart disease below 55 years of age. Because the female hormone, they protect the heart. So once they become menopause, they catch up with the man quickly to get heart disease. And obesity, obesity is well known to causing a lot of problems. They tend to have high blood pressure. They tend to easily go to heart failure. They cause uh, a lot of mortality mobility. Even you reach, you gain 10, 20 pounds, looks like it doesn't matter, but it can affect your lifespan. And uh, let's go to the next topic. So about, how about the non-modifiable risk factor, which you hardly can do anything about it. For instance, the family history. If you have parents, they have a heart attack before, before they get retired. Or lady, they have heart attack before 65. Or the man, they have heart disease or even stroke at the age of 55. So we consider you may put your, you, yourself in the category of at risk or are to, prone to have heart problem. And ages, unfortunately, we cannot do anything about the age. If you get older, naturally you have heart chance, a higher chance to have heart problem. And gender, if you're male, male is more tend to have heart problem compared to female, okay? And race, now, in the United States, people die from heart problem, the white population still are highest in the category of the race uh, level. The next to the white is the black population. And the number three, it is, it is Asian and Islander. It is higher than the Spanish. So the number four is the Spanish. The Spanish is 
in fact, it's less than Asian people to have heart problems. And then they go to the last one category is the Alaskan or American Indian. Okay, those are less heart problem compared to the rest. So this is we're talking about non-modifiable risk factor. This is the diagram which we are talking a little bit earlier. Now, we call the ACS earlier we mentioned, acute coronary syndrome. What is pathophysiology underlying that? This is almost the same that we mentioned before. Number one, ages, and then cholesterol. And number three, the high blood pressure. Number four, smoking cigarette. And number five, diabetes. And number six, is genetic. So in fact, you will see this time of the concept repeated and repeated again. At the very end, I can summarize that. They're all related. They're all causing more or less about affect people getting heart problems. This is similar to the one I mentioned earlier. Initiation is the lipid accumulation in the intima of the artery, which is the artery of the coronal arteries. And it also involves the lymphocyte and monocyte, which is some type of the white blood cell in the blood circulation, which it becomes a macrophage. Macrophage means they can choose up, they can swallow, they can eat the fat tissue, the fat cell, the fat, the cholesterol stuff. And then they become the big cell, and then subsequently they sacrifice themselves and then become part of the injury to the vessel, to the artery. And also due to some other reaction, the, the smooth muscle cell of the artery it become regenerated, proliferated, and then getting bigger and bigger, and subsequently shut off all the artery, the lumen. And at time, it forming a astroma, astroma just like look a tumor, a small mass, which is, there's a fibrous cap, which a lot of fiber tissue in cover the, the top of the cap, which is just like the coveno, coveno. Volcano, just like the volcano. Now, the volcano can be ruptured. Once ruptured, it will break out the inner, inner substance will exposed to the blood. Subsequently, the platelet or some other stuff in the blood circulation will try to cover it and then to stop and shut up completely of the artery circulation. That will end up to be have a heart attack. So we mentioned about the cap rupture. We don't know why it's suddenly rupture and causing bleeding. The bleeding causing thrombi. Thrombi means blood clot. And then the serious thing causing sudden heart attack or sudden death or only chest pain after result of this blood supply and back to normal again. So how do we know that we are having a heart attack? Okay, the number one symptoms of chest pain. So in Latin language, they call angina pectoris. Pectoris means in the chest. Angina means the pain. Just like particular picture, it's a winter, stormy, and snowed weather. You went to the restaurant, you came out, exerted yourself, and then you chest discomfort on the chest, so we call it chest pain. Or mostly, sometimes they have some atypical symptom we will relate it and talking about later. So if very serious, it causing heart attack, myocardial infarction in a medical term. Infarct means death, dead muscle or dead any tissue. Myocardial means the heart muscle. Myo is a, heart, is a muscle. Cardio is, means a heart. 
The number three is diaphoresis, that means cold sweating. And number four, ECG changes if you do the EKG right away, and there's uh, some, some changes. So in the United States, anything happens, you call 911. Once you call 911, there will come three truck or ambulance. The police will come, the fire department will come, and the ambulance will come. So the ambulance, normally they equip it with the EKG machine. They can do the EKG machine in your house, in your residence, okay, before they move you to the hospital emergency room. So the EKG is typical, they, they show something changes, they make the diagnosis, they, they can tell right away you are having a heart attack or come, being to have a heart attack very soon. So I think in the United States, it is standard. The ambulance, they can equip with EKG and then they can buy telemetry, by the radio, this factor, this is transmission, the EKG to the local emergency room uh, e equipment with the recept about the EKG finding, they know right away. The emergency room doctor and the emergency room cardiologist on call, they can look at it, they said, oh, you, you're having a heart attack. We are ready to receive your patient very quickly. So some dysrhythmia, that means irregular heart rate, and this there means you have difficulty breathing, and you feel very weak, we call fatigue in many weeks. So how do we do the diagnosis? The diagnosis is, of course, number one diagnosis is by the history, the same as in any other medical issues. The doctor listens to history, 70, 80 percent, they make the diagnosis by just carefully listening to history and by analysis. After the history, and go to the physical examination, try to get some signs and symptoms to correlate, to support the history, whether it's true or not. And the blood test, of course, nowadays we have very good blood tests, immediately, very quickly, within hours, we can detect that whether you have a heart attack or not. Because, because the heart muscle in our body they produce a very specific chemical, which is only existed in the heart muscle of the body. No other part has this chemical. So once the heart muscle get damaged, and then this chemical release into the blood, so we draw the blood, it is once go higher than normal, we know that your heart muscle is being damaged. That means you have a heart, heart, heart attack. So it's a very sensitive and very helpful to make diagnosis. Of course, we're talking about the EKG, ECG, and also we can do echocardiogram, which is sonogram of the heart, which is take time and uh, troublesome. So the first thing is the blood test and EKG, you almost make the diagnosis right away. And the stress test, number six, stress test is normally we reserve it for as outpatient instead. Because in acute setting, there is no place to do a stress test. And number seven is nuclear imaging, more complicated, much consuming time and also expand, which it will reserve mostly for outpatient workup. And angiogram is the gold standard to make the diagnosis and also involve the treatment which can do very easily, and, but also involve a lot of people, involve a lot of expertise, involve a bigger s hospital center, so it's not easy to proceed. How about the complication? Once you have a heart attack, what complication you may have face it? Of course, number one is chest pain. You do have chest pain, and then you pointed out you may have heart problem. Myocardial infarction, that means you already have a heart attack. And number three, if the heart attack is damaged to your muscle to a certain amount, more than 30, 40%, your heart cannot provide enough energy to your body's need, you become heart failure. Failure means 
imbalance of the supply and the demand. If the supply cannot reach, cannot meet the demand, you become failure. And the risk behind number four means unsteady of the electricity of your heart rhythm. At time, it may cause suddenly the heart stop and then die. Not because the heart muscle damage, but because of arrhythmia, because electric unstable, which is normally if you have time, reach the hospital, reach the emergency room, we still can save life. Management. Once you have a heart attack, what is management we should deliver or offer to the patient? Of course, if you have above symptoms, you may go to see the doctor, or may, may, you may need to go to see directly to cardiologist, or if urgently, you should go to emergency room or call 911. Okay, you don't call your family member, don't call your son, don't call your sister, don't call your daughter. You couldn't get home with them hours later, but if you have doubt, don't even call the doctor, call 911. They are the fast way to resolve and help you. And once, if you are very stable, you have this pain on and off for a couple of weeks, and you had it before, and, but you need to go see the doctor, you start the treatment, of course, treatment, including medical treatment or surgical treatment. A medical treatment is basically just for medication. Okay, a surgical treatment including you do the angiogram, do the angioplasty, or you fix the artery, or you put a stand in, or even do the bypass surgery. So the surgical in, uh, intervention, as I mentioned, you do the angioplasty means to fix the artery, either with a balloon or with a stand, or directly go bypass surgery. So this is the picture that we perform the angioplasty in the operation room or in the capsule laboratory. And this is a picture about what the corneal bypass surgery means of it. And prevention. Once you have a heart attack, you need different level of the prevention. So we will talk about those in the future. And this is the long way to go. It became, it because become your principal lifestyle changes. And I think this one, we just uh, stop here. A lot of things, how to make us happy and happy and go live a longer and happier life. And basically this is the couple of things we want to remind us today, I recap the, the story, which about my talk. Quick smoking, if you smoke, if you're overweight, you need to lose weight and do exercise every day, five days a week, and also keep the diet. Mediterranean diet is a famous, you can obtain from the web, how to do, eat a healthy food. And live a healthy lifestyle, we decrease from 50 to 80%, decrease your chance of heart problem, a stroke, or sudden death, or premature death from the heart disease. So, the, so we want to entertain any uh, question you may have, and uh, w I think let's stop here. Okay. Thank you all for participating in the workshop today. Uh, we will see you next month. Please stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.